Welcome back to Titan Academy. In this video, we will get oriented with Titan Forms 2.0. We'll go over the setup of a simple form, getting and pulling data from Salesforce, pushing data to Salesforce, uploading a file, and how to show and hide elements conditionally. Here in my project, I have a simple form that we've added to the page. We have a form, we have some text input fields, we have email and phone input fields. We have a checkbox. We have the file uploader. And we have some buttons with actions behind them. All of these can be found in the sidebar menu. Click on the little plus, and you see your elements that you can add to the page. You can type in the search bar and search for them. So here's your form, inputs, you see text fields, text area, email, phone, etc. buttons, like so. Let's go ahead and preview this form and see how it works. I've set up a couple of things here. One, I've set up a push action behind this create button to create a contact with the information that gets entered. We've also set up a find action to search for an existing contact based on an entered email and a reset to reset the form. So let's give this a test. Let's say I enter a new contact, Joe Smith, let's enter a mobile phone number. We can pick a file to upload. I'll pick one from my desktop. And when I click the create button, it will push that information to Salesforce and create a new contact. We get a message saying that the contact has been created. If I look in my Salesforce environment, I can see that Joe Smith, the contact, has been created. And we look here, and we can see that the file that we added has been created and associated with the new contact. If I reset, that will reset the form. And we can search for existing contacts based on the email. So if I enter an email and then click find, it will find any contacts that have that matching email and return the first one. So this should return the contact that we just created. And there you go. Also on this form, I've set up some logic to show or hide the home phone number field based on whether or not this mobile and home phone are the same is selected. If it's selected, then the home phone field is not needed, therefore it's hidden. If it's not selected, meaning these two numbers are going to be different, clear the checkbox and the home phone field will show, like that. So let's look at how all of this is set up. After adding the form and all the other controls to the page, go to the gear, go to Salesforce in the menu. Here we can see our gets, which retrieve data from Salesforce, and our pushes, which push data to Salesforce. You will see other options such as pick lists and events in the integration logs. We'll go over those in other videos. This get that I created is the get for the contact. The chosen object is contact. The trigger to execute the pull of the data is a user action. You can also use auto trigger or on load. We'll go over those options in other videos. And if there are multiple matches found, we only want the first record. The condition is if the email field in Salesforce matches what has been entered in the email field on the page. For mapping, I will go ahead and filter this to the mapped fields. And you can see that we have mapped four fields from Salesforce from the contact record to four different fields on our form. First name to first name, last name to last name, and so on. Now let's look at the push. Similar to the get, our primary object is the contact. We have set this as a create action. You can also update, find, or delete. We will go over those options in other videos. For our mapping, I'll again filter for only map fields. And here we have five mappings. We are mapping last name on the form to last name in Salesforce, first name to first name, etc. So when we run this push, Titan will create a contact record in Salesforce using the values that are entered in the last name, first name, 
and so on fields on the form. We also created a child push to upload any files that have been added on the file uploader. So here in our object settings, we are creating a record in the files object in Salesforce, also known as the content version. The action is create. For the mapping, again, we'll filter for map fields. The version data field is the file itself. And the first published location ID is the first record to which this file should be attached. In this case, it's going to be the ID of the contact record that was just created. So we select number one, push, contact, and the associated field, contact ID. Now let's look at how we invoke these actions. As you can see, we have three buttons added to the form, create, find, and reset. Let's look at our create. Select the button and click on this link that pops up in the menu. This will open the button action flow creator. From here, from the start, we've added a node, a Salesforce action. This will call the get that creates the contact. So we've selected an action. If you select one, there's only one that's available to us right now, but it is that contact create push that we set up just a minute ago. We gave it an appropriate tag. And then after that push is finished, we display a message. So we added a show message node, put in a custom message, thank you for your submission. When the user clicks that button, the push will execute and they will get this confirmation message. Similarly, for the find, select the button and you can click this link to open the actions or you can go into the gear, into the properties. Button settings, interactivity, configure on click action takes you to the same place. In this case, we added a Salesforce action, and here we want to call the get, the contact get that we created that will pull records from Salesforce and map to the fields on the form. We called it Salesforce action get contact. For the reset, we added a form interactivity node. We selected our form. Here we only have one. The action is reset. Let's give this a tag to clear all form fields. And there we are. Finally, to set up the logic to show or hide the home phone field based on whether or not this checkbox is selected, we selected our checkbox. Go to the gear in the settings, select conditions. Here we have a rule. We'll configure out our conditions. On our conditions, we've added an if node, and we've set the condition as follows. If the checkbox mobile and home phone are the same, equals Boolean true, then we execute an effect elements action. There's all kinds of things that you can do to any element on the page. Show, hide, enable, disable, make them mandatory, make them not mandatory based on conditions. In this case, what we want to do is hide the phone number field if that box is checked. Conversely, if it's unchecked, we want to show that field. So here we added a show. And that is how it's done.